Ah, oh, hello. Is it that time already? Oh. Hello. What's this? What's this? What's this? Is it a monkey? Because it's a grown up. Let's have a look and see. Oh, it's a monkey on a stick. Look at that. Pow! How good is that? Let's just get rid of this, shall we? Let's just take that away there. We don't need that, do we? We know what's happening. We've been here before, inquirers. Now, goes down here. Steady on. The stool! Let's put the monkey. Get off me, monkey. Get off me. We'll put the monkey on the stool, won't we? He can look after that. There we go. Off goes the stool. I have to tell you, I'm a bit excited about today. You might have gathered last week. I was excited because X-rays. Oh, yes. Now, I'm particularly excited, of course, because part of my real job when I'm not doing this uh, wonderful thing uh, is, of course, uh, telling people all about the magic of x-rays, how they're made, how we use them, what we do with them, how we're safe with them, all manner of exciting things. And I'm really, really uh, keen to sh show x-rays to you. You can't see them, but that makes it easier to show them you. Here they are. Oh, right. So let's uh, remind ourselves what's happening today. Uh, of course, I need to uh, remind you of Basil. Here's Basil. He lives in the teapot. Hello, Basil. Hello. Roar. Yes, I'm sorry I nibbled your leaf. It looked so tasty. I couldn't help it. Um, Basil can sit there, can't he, today? Now, we, need to, we do need to be careful. If, if there's x-rays around, they can be a bit dangerous. So I've got my safety equipment uh, stashed to one side for our, oh, our experiment today, inquirers. Oh, my goodness. No one has played this in the history of the world. I can't wait to try it with you. So, um, where do we start? I found a stick. Um, that's not relevant to today. <laughs> Many things aren't. What else do I need to show you? The potato. Oh, the potato phone. The wonderment of delight. You'll notice it changes names every week because I can't remember what I said the week before. Uh, but I think it's called the potato phone. That sounds about right. Uh, why don't we start with a sound check? Oh, there's no birthdays today. Well, there are. I'm sure there's lots of birthdays today. But nobody here. Anyone under there? No. So uh, a, a nice big, uh, we'll have one, two, three, and then I want you to shout uh, X-rays. Okay, hold on, hold on. One, two, three. Oh, I, I turned it on this time. Every other week I forgot, but I'm so pumped up uh, for x-rays. I actually remember this week. Good, we'll use that in a moment. Now, I've had some amazing artwork through as homework from last week. So thank you very much for those. I think we should definitely start uh, by having a look at those. Let me just uh, enter the blackboard and see what I can find. Uh, hello, what's in, what's in here? Hmm, an old sock in there. It's a bit strange, isn't it? Right then. Where should we start? I've had this amazing dragon. Uh, it's appeared. It's appeared from nowhere. Look at that. Ethan sent that through. What an amazing looking dragon. Look at the colours on it. Wow. And look at the big teeth in the mouth. Ah! The big flappy wings. Flap, 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 flap. And the, the little feet there. Doing, 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 doing. That's a really cool looking dragon. I love it. Brilliant. Thank you, Ethan, uh, as ever, for all of your homework. Um, I've also had some amazing pictures come through from uh, some of our new viewers down in Cambridge. Hello, Cambridge. All right, Cambridge. How's it going? 
Sorry for anyone who uh, is from Cambridge and finds that incredibly uh, bad accent wise. I think it's significantly better than that, but uh, it's the best I could do at short notice. And it was short notice. These, though, is a double act here. We've got a picture from a young man called Jack first. So we'll start with Jack. So I'm going to fold it so I don't want to, uh, I don't want to overlap the two and, and take the honor away from Jack. Uh, and or deeds the honour away from uh, whoever comes next, we shall see. So this is Jack's amazing looking dragon. Look at that. That is so cool. I don't know where to start. There's legs, there's neck, there's arms, there's a head, there's big wings, there's a big body, there's a long tail. Wow, I would not like to meet that dragon on a dark and stormy night. Hmm. So thank you, Jack. That's tremendous. I learned plenty more artwork like that from you, if that's okay. And uh, a young man, you know, I don't know what's happened here with the shading. I do apologize, but look how well rendered that is. Uh, this is from Jack's uh, daddy. So uh, a Mr. Andrew, uh, a man of, of, of advancing years, sadly. Uh, but he has drawn, look, an amazing dragon. Look at that powering down from the sky. <laughs> Swooping down. <laughs> Great, thank you. That that's gonna uh, the, both of those are gonna keep me awake at night, uh, wondering if there's a dragon on the loose. Uh, let's have a look at, uh, at, at some more dragons, shall we? So uh, again, I'll fold this. You, you don't want to see two at once, do you? That'd be overload, dragon overload. Here we go, Elsa again. A beautiful, beautiful dragon. I think that's a lady dragon. What do you think? I mean, I don't, I don't like to make such sweeping uh, statements normally, but look how elegant and beautiful that dragon is. Look, a long, slender body with those beautiful scales, really well drawn, uh, some tiny little legs. And, of course, that's fine. For, for something that flies a lot, you don't really want big, dangling, flapping legs all over the place. The first thing an air, aeroplane does when it gets into the sky is fold its little flapping legs away. They're not legs, of course. They're wheels, but... You know what I mean? So, a perfect for a flying reptile. And look at the wings, big wings, flap, 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 flap. And uh, if, if you think it's a nice, friendly dragon, look at the front end there. <sighs> wow, look at that. Arrgh! Toasting marshmallows on that. That'd be tremendous fun, wouldn't it? So thank you all. So that's wonderful. Now, our next, uh, our next beautiful picture. Oh, you can see what's coming up. Oh, hide them. Arrgh! Our next picture is an action shot, and it shows a dragon in action. Look at that. Rawr, a dragon flying down over, over, it looks suspiciously like the laboratory, actually. Uh, have you checked the roof? Head elf, head elf, have you checked the roof for dragon fire? Hmm? Be, be sure to do that. Uh, of course, our laboratory looks just like that with the turrets and the, the spiky bits. And uh, look at this. Caleb has drawn this amazing dragon. It's got a lovely little face on it. It's dripping, literally dripping fire down onto the roof of the castle there, uh, looking down with its cheeky grin, its big, long, pointy tail flapping along behind it. Thank you again, uh, Caleb. Another wonderful offering from you, my good sir. What's next? What's next? What's next? Another from one of our, our regular viewers. And usually the first off the bat uh, with these pictures, literally drawing them live so that they can arrive at, uh, at the laboratory at push taste, as they say. Uh, this is from our beloved uh, G-Dad. And here you can see him uh, riding this magnificent beast pouring flame out of its mouth, but with a, a friendly smile on its face and some big pointy ears and these undisclosed pieces here. What are these, we ask ourselves? Whiskers, maybe? Reins? I don't know. They're kind of sticking out of the dragon. So a little clarification, perhaps, uh, required, but as ever, uh, the signature uh, rider here, grinning and waving, bravely clinging on with one hand, but this dragon flies and flaps across the sky. Amazing. Now, brace yourselves. Most of the artwork we get is drawn with people's hands and, and some kind of pen or p not this one. <sighs> this one is made through the power of a computer. Ooh, steady on. This one comes from a young man called Richard. Richard, look at look at what Richard has made. Uh, look at that fiery dragon breathing fire over the over the mountain. Richard, I don't think you're of primary school age, are you, young man? But beautifully rendered. Thank you very much. Again, it's bearing down, piercing, diving. Rawr, I love it. Thank you very much for that. 
uh, Richard. That's that's tremendous. Richard! Now, what's next? Have we got any more? We've got loads this week. Everyone's really excited about dragons or really bored. I don't know which. Now, this again, very unique. But we are in the, the presence of a, a dignitary. This was sent in by a lady. Lady Laura. Lady Laura, you say, as you doff your tie to her. Lady Laura, I thank you for your kind gift of a dragon. Look at this. Mad I, Madam Dragon, are we allowed to say? I don't know. It looks a little bit ladylike, doesn't it? Uh, look at this beautiful dragonette here. She's breathing fire through her spiky, gang, 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 spiky teeth and mouth with her ears behind. She's got lots of lovely spots all over her. Mm, or is it a nasty rash? We don't know, do we? We don't know anything about dragon disease. Ooh, maybe it's just normal patterning like a cheetah or a leopard. Uh, I don't know what it's going to blend into flying in the sky, but uh, let's not critique her. She's a lady. Look at the wings. Big wings, those flapping, flapping, flapping wings. Love them. Thank you very much, uh, Lady Laura. Mm, Honoured. Honoured as ever to uh, accept members of the, uh, the, the dignitary. And uh, as ever, we, we finish with an amazing piece right here from the laboratory, down in the, the basement. Young Eli has been busily uh, craning away. Look at that. He's written his name there. Uh, there's a dragon there standing tall, this dragon, look, with big teeth again, breathing fire out. And he's holding a little something in his hand. What might he be holding in his hand? Any ideas? Have a think about what he might be holding in his hands. What do dragons hold in their hands? Only you will know. Anyway, thank you again, Eli. Some amazing artwork. So thank you all very much uh, indeed. Now, we're going to proceed with x-rays. <gasps> hold your horses. Before we do that, we need to think very carefully. Why do we have x-rays? What do we need them for? And most of the time... X-rays are used, I mean, they're used for lots of things, but most of the time they're used to let us see inside people. We get their permission first. Let's see inside people and see if there's anything broken or if there's anything wrong with them. So I thought we'd start with you maybe telling me, I don't know, maybe you've had an X-ray in the past. I don't know. So what I'd like you to do is let me untangle the complicated mechanisms. Remember, we, we have a potato. Potatoes are very, uh, very good at picking up uh, a sound and ideas and thoughts that flow through the, uh, through the air. So uh, this trusty potato now, it's been with us for uh, a good five or six weeks, uh, beginning to smell somewhat. So ah, continuing. Uh, so I'd like you now to tell me... Uh, uh, Good. I'd like you to tell me if you've broken something. I'd like you to shout what it is you might have broken. Oh, you poor things. A toe? How did you break a toe? Oh, my goodness. Did you drop something on it, maybe? So some people break their toes, don't they? Oh, you poor... Th what a... Ankle. Oh, yes. That must be sore. You can't walk properly if your ankle's a bit broken. These bones in your body, they're usually very strong. And if you if you drink your milk, of course, they you very strong bones. Ah! So uh, always drink your milk, I would say. Uh, I always drink mine uh, in tea. I'll come to the tea later. Oh, oh. What else are people... What's that? Oh, you broke your arm. Oh, you poor thing. That's not good. What's that one? Richard, yes, I can hear you. Wind? What do you mean, wind? Oh, what, you broke you broke wind? Oh, you can't tell me things like that. Oh, it's not that kind of a lecture. Outrageous. So we've got uh, things that couldn't break. In fact, I'm going to rub it off. I don't want wind breaking around here. Hmm, shame. The shame of it. Outrageous. Good. Uh, I changed my cloth, by the way. I don't know if you noticed, but the other one had stars on, which was lovely. Uh, but again, I've had that all the way since Rockets and Head Elf said, that cloth's beginning to smell a bit, isn't it? Uh, so I said, yes, I'll wash it. And of course, I washed it. Uh, so now I've got one with what looks like lion faces on it. Arrgh! Nothing to do with x-rays. But, uh, you know, if you've got an x-ray cloth, take a photo and send it to me. I'd love to see it. Um, right. So... What do we do if we want to see inside somebody? It's really difficult. I mean, you could 
open them up. But I wouldn't think that was a good idea. That would hurt a lot. And I don't think it would probably do more harm than it would do good. So instead, we use x-rays. And what I want to do, start off with, is talking about what is an x-ray and how do we make one. And it's, it's very complicated. So first of all, we need to think about something that we use every day. We're using right now. What are we using right now? We're using electricity. Oh, so we've got a plug, haven't we? Here's our little plug. And our plug has got three little pins on it and then a wire coming off it. And we plug that plug into the wall. This is a dreadful picture of a plug. Maybe you could do a better one. Uh, if you can't, ask a grown-up. If you can't find a grown-up, ask a monkey. They're very good at drawing. Oh, yes. So what happens when you plug something in? Plug! You get a grown-up to do it because it can be really dangerous. And the reason it's dangerous is these tiny little things. These tiny little things. They zoom along really, really, really fast. They've got lots of energy. And these little things have got a special name. And they are called electrons. And from electron, we get electronic. Electricity, perhaps. All sorts of things. So these little tiny, tiny, they're so small, you can't see them. But they carry lots of energy. So these electrons zoom along and then, I don't know, you might have plugged in, maybe you've plugged in some kind of light bulb here. So you, you, the electrons come into the light bulb, they whiz around in here, they make it very, very hot, and then out comes all of this amazing light. So electrons are the important thing that we need in order to make x-rays. So if we imagine going into a room for an x-ray, there'll be a machine there. And this machine, uh, usually called a tube. Not tuba, much different. You blow in a tuba, you could blow into a tube, but it wouldn't help very much, would it? I'm wiping the board too much today. Right, so what happens inside our tube, it does look a bit like a tube, is what happens is we get these electrons. And instead of being in a wire, we shoot them out with the gun. Bang! Bang! And these electrons get lots and lots and lots and lots of energy. So they're going really, 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 really fast. Now, sometimes you see people in a car, don't you, driving? They're driving fast. And you think, oh, that was fast. So these are going much, much faster than that. And they're getting faster and faster all the way. And then what do we do? We put something in the way. A big chunk of metal. Now, what do you think happens? If you're going along really fast, and suddenly a big chunk of metal appears, ah, you've got to stop really, 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 really quickly. Oh. So they have to stop really, really quickly. They crash into this chunk of metal. Wow. All that energy that they had. Now, do you remember when we talked about rockets? And in rockets, we said, you put lots of energy in at the bottom, <laughs> fires the rocket up, and it loses all that energy. It goes higher and higher and higher and higher, and then it gets out into space. So the energy changes from, if you remember, kinetic to potential. Now here, we've got lots and lots of kinetic energy. They're moving really fast, and that stops. So we have to change that energy into something else. And what we change it into, inquirers, are these rays. Now then, these rays are very unusual. You can't see them. They go in straight lines, and they go very, 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 very fast. Okay? The other really cool thing about x-rays is if you put something in the way, they can go through it. Wow! In a straight line, straight through it. Imagine, imagine inquirers, if you came to your door and instead of opening the door to come through it, you walk through the door. That'd shock people, wouldn't it? Wow! So these x-rays can go straight through things. It's a little bit magical, isn't it? So when we make an x-ray, the first thing we do is we make lots and lots of these electrons move very, very quickly. And then they move very, very quickly, crash into a bit of metal and stop. And all that energy that they had from moving quickly changes into a different type of energy. Now, when people first found these 
x-rays. They didn't know what to call them. So when you don't know what to call something in maths, we're not going to do too much maths, I promise. When you don't know what something's called in maths, you usually call it x. Okay. So that somebody found out, oh, a very clever chap called Röntgen. Should we say Röntgen? Röntgen! Now, it's a funny one to spell. It starts with an R. R Röntgen. Then there's an O. Then there's an E. You don't see that very often, do you? Except in the word to. <laughs> Rönt. N. T. Oh, I can't draw the clippy things in the way. I've got the clippy thing here that's in the way. Rönt. Gun. Wilhelm Röntgen, very clever chap. Well, he figured this out. Uh, what, what do you call these things? They're rays. They go through. They've never seen anything like them before. They're very strange. We'll call them X-rays. And that name has stuck. And thank goodness it has. You look at any book that starts with A, B, C, and you have maybe an apple or an aardvark. Then for B, you have a banana or a bear. You go all the way through to X, and you're a little bit stuck. There's not a whole heap of words that start with X, do they? My breakfast starts with X. X and bacon. <sighs> so the two words that we commonly find in these books, xylophone. Pinkity, 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 pink. Uh, so that's x-rays. Now, I've got to tell you a few things about x-rays. I've already said, haven't I, that they, uh, they can pass through things. They go very, very fast. They go in straight lines. You can't see them. You can't smell them. You can't taste them. Ooh, very, very complicated things. But perhaps the most dangerous thing about x-rays is the fact that they can change parts of your body as they pass through. They can make tiny little changes to parts of your body. Now, if you need to have an x-ray because you've got something broken or you don't know what's wrong with you, that's fine. You have the x-ray and a little bit of uh, change to your body and your body's fine with that. But if you have a lot of x-rays a lot of the time, some of these changes can be really bad. And that's why people who work with x-rays make sure that they're well away. They're, they're hidden behind lots of things that can block the x-rays so that they're nice and safe. And that's an important part of x-rays. I had to tell you that uh, because, you know, it's important that you know all of these things, inquirers, because you've got inquiring minds. You ask, why? Why can't they be in the room? Why are these x-rays? This is why they're dangerous, dangerous things. Oh, all this danger is making me thirsty. Shall we have some tea? And while I'm making the tea, you can send me your questions, if you like, on, on the email. Uh, you remember that. Oh, where's it gone? Monkey, get it back. You remember there's a little uh, email address at the bottom here. Uh, get off, Basil. Uh, Dr. Pete Bridge at gmail.com. You can send me your, uh, your questions, anything you want to ask about x-rays. I'll have a bit of tea, and then we're going to talk about how we use x-rays in the body. Okay? Hmm. Man of mystery makes tea. Let's have a look. Oh, what have we got today? A delight for the senses. I was going to make, make tea out of things that start with X. Can you imagine how difficult that is? Nothing. Nothing. A handful of very weird things start with X. And I haven't got any of them. Some kind of sardine. Uh, there's some kind of watermelon. Um, things I've never heard of. So instead, I've gone for things that I just happen to find in two minutes of running around the kitchen here at the laboratory. And I've gone for a strawberry. Oh, I love a strawberry. Do you like strawberries? If you like strawberries, shout, yes. I can't hear you because I've not got the earphone in. Oh, should we do that again? If you like strawberries, shout, yes. Oh, there's a lot of love for strawberries out there. That's tremendous. In go the strawberries. And we're going to macerate them. That's a good word. In fact, it's such a good word. I am going to write it down. It's a posh way of saying mash them up a bit. Mash. And it sounds, it starts a bit like mash, doesn't it? Macerate. Macerate. Fantastic. What a word to know. I'm going to macerate them with the knife. Sharp knife. Never play with sharp knives. Uh, next, I've got some sage. Oh, sage leaf. I picked it from the gardens here at the laboratory. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to poke this uh, sage. I'm going to tear it up a little bit. Don't mind. Don't look, Basil. Don't look. 
frighten you. Poke that in and I'm going to macerate them up a little bit. And I think that's the key to getting a nice good colour in the tea. I'm hoping we get a good colour in this tea now. And finally, I found this. This is marmalade. Oh, I love a bit of marmalade. Oh, yes. I'm going to stir up a bit of maceration, but mainly stirring uh, using my spoon. And I'm going to have a look at my telecommunications device and see what questions uh, you might have sent in uh, for me. Brew, infuse. I've got to get my device out. Let's have a look at my, uh, my little device. Right, what have we got here? So, yeah, let's have a look. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Oh, thank you. That's a, that's a great question. If, you, if I could, thank you. If I could name an X-ray any other letter, what letter would I use? Oh, that's such a good one. Mm, mm, well, I, I think of a few that might not work, okay? The first one that might not work is, get rid of that. We don't need that. The first one is P rays. And you think P, P would be great because Pete, Dr. Pete, P. So P rays. Oh, that doesn't work, does it? Praise. That's a word itself. Oh, that would be confusing for everyone. Well, Dr. Pete Bridge, B, B. Let's have B rays. Dun, dun, dun. Braise. That's, that's the noise a donkey makes. Oh, oh, braise. That's no good, is it? Oh, my goodness me. There's a lot of worry. Drays, craze. There are all of these things have been used before, haven't they? Gray. Gray with an A is actually the unit we measure x rays in. Who'd have thought it? So I'm going to choose Z rays. That's what I'd call them. If I couldn't say x rays, I'd go Z rays. No reason. I just love the letter Z. You turn on your side, it's a capital N. Right, uh, thank you for that question. Uh, that's very civilised of you. Um, and do send me any more of your questions or queries or indeed comments, feedback, silly jokes. Let's have a look at the tea. Where's the cup? Oh, here's the cup. Let's have a look. Wow, that's a colour, isn't it? Ooh. <laughs> that's a great looking colour. Wow, that might be the, the best colour tea I've ever had. Uh, let's have a look at it, shall we? Um, so here's the tea, Inquirers. Oh, look at it. Can you see it? Mm, look at the steam coming off it. Evaporation, remember? Precipitation, evaporation. Let us taste. Hmm. Oh, the sage is right there. Hello, I'm sage. Oh, and orange marmalade. Ooh, this is actually really nice. I'm going to drink this. Mmm. I'll be honest with you, the strawberry's a little bit lost. But I think we've got the nice red colour from the strawberries. Let's have a little bit more. Mmm. Oh, that's delicious tea. Oh, I very, 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 very like that. Right, I'm going to put that to one side. And I've got to tell you lots of lots more things about how we use x-rays. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, I'm not going to keep that there. It's such delicious tea. I'm going to keep quaffing or sipping or slurping. Do you want me to slurp? Let's have a slurp, shall we? Hold on. Do you know why people slurp tea? So tea's hot. And if you take something that's really hot in your mouth, it hurts, it hurts, it hurts. So if you slurp it, you're taking a little bit of air with it. And the air as you slurp it bubbles through it and cools it down. So it actually cools it on its way. And of course it sounds wonderful. Tricky to do slurping without actually breathing in the tea. That's never good for one or two, is it? Right, where are we up to? Um, X-rays. So let's have a look then at Z-rays. <laughs> it's silly, isn't it? It's silly. Oh, ridiculous. Ridiculous. Absolutely. Chalk. So let's have a look at X-rays. When we take an X-ray of a human being, that's us. That's us. Here's a person. They've got a nose. Can you see that's their nose? Uh, this is their body. These are their feet. My, what big feet. And here are their arms. This person looks a little bit like a penguin. Right. So when we pass our x-rays through, 
through them. It goes through them. Different things happen to those x-rays. So let's imagine that this person has got a big chunk inside here of bone. You have big, strong bones. You drink your milk, you get strong bones. And let's imagine also that this bit of them, they've got air. Like when you breathe in, it goes in here where the air is, in your lungs. Okay? So let's imagine that's too big a bone, isn't it? We're going to need a little one. We've got a blob of bone here. Let's imagine we've got a normal sort of muscle here and some air here. Now, what happens is the x-rays, they can go straight through the air whoopee, and carry on going. Dead easy. When it comes to bone, crash, they stop. They can't get through the bone. It's too thick and hard. And some of them manage to get through the muscle. And what happens when we take an x-ray is we have a look. We take a picture and it's like a map then. And it shows us there's loads of x-rays have got through here. And there's a few have got through here. And there's none have got through here. It's empty of x-rays. And that is how we come up with our amazing x-ray. Let me show you one I made earlier. So here, let us erase. Quick erase. Erasing. Marvellous, marvellous. Uh, let's put our x-ray picture up here. Now, I don't know if you can see that in Quirers. It depends on how large your viewing screen is. You probably can't. Let me start with it close up to you, shall I? And see where we go from there. So here we are. This is a picture of an x-ray. Now, this isn't one I took. That'd be very dangerous, wouldn't it? So uh, what you can see then is that you've got these black bits. This is a picture of someone's chest. And here, all the x-rays have gone through. <laughs> and here in the middle... Oh, it's white. That means the x-rays have been stopped and they've been stopped by your big backbone. It goes right down the back in the middle of you. Whee! And everywhere else we can see a little bit of x-ray has come through. That's where you've got your muscles, your soft tissues, and in this case, your heart. So your heart sits inside the middle, just here, on the left-hand side of your middle. So if you think about the x-rays, you've got the heart, You've got all the bones going down the middle and you've got your lungs wrapped around. And that's why we get the black bits, which are the lungs. We get that sort of pale bit in the middle, which is the heart and all the bones of the backbone there going down. Now you can see some stripes. Those stripes are your ribs. You can feel your ribs underneath your skin. They kind of stripe along here. And you can see those on that x-ray, can't you? Those stripy ribs going all the way around. Isn't that magical? Now, if there's something wrong with this person, uh, we'd be able to look at this and go, oh, they've broken a rib. Oh, their, their, their spine is all, it's not very straight. Oh, their heart's a funny shape. We can find out what's wrong with them and then we can make them. It's a wonderful thing to do. Okay, I think it's time for an experiment. Holy moly, are you ready, inquirers? I'm ready for an experiment. Last bit of tea. Now, I'm going to try and take an x-ray using light. Surely, you say, surely that can't be done. No, it can't. But I'm going to show you a little experiment that will hopefully try to show you how x-rays work. OK, so the first thing we need uh, is our patient. So uh, let's find our patient. We'll have a nice little uh, stool here for our patient to, uh, to sit on. And our patient today is, uh, is Arthur. Hello, Arthur. Are you all right, Arthur? Come on, Arthur. Hop, hop, hop. Oh, that's a good boy, that's Arthur. Oh, hello, Arthur. How are you today? Oh, you're not feeling very well. Oh, poor Arthur. Right, so what we'll do with Arthur is we're going to uh, we're going to have a look behind him at the screen here, and we're going to try our very best uh, to see what's up with him. So I'll turn on the x-rays. Oh, I forgot my safety equipment. Oh, there we go. Oh. Now, I'm making x-rays. Don't I look cool, inquirers? <laughs> Safety equipment. Need my stethoscope. Hello, Arthur. Ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. You're doing very well there, Arthur. Now, what we're going to do with Arthur is move him back a little bit, I think. Uh, we need to move the x-ray screen a little bit so that you can uh, see him, inquirers. There uh, we go. <laughs> And we'll turn him round just a little bit. And hopefully you can see when I move him round, 
you can see. Uh, oh, hello. Stay on there. Stay there, Arthur. We can see his, his head there. So what I'm going to do now is draw around it with my exciting chalk. Keep losing it. So when you have an X-ray, all the X-rays come through, just like the light is coming through from this little torch here. And we get this pattern on the film. This film very cleverly uh, draws around it for us. And here we can see, oh, what a hairy head you've got, Arthur. Keep nice and still. There's a good dog. So here we can see now. And we'll switch the X-rays off. Well done, Arthur. You can, you can hop down now. We'll switch the X-rays off. There we go. So hop down. Off you hop, Arthur. Thank you for helping today, by the way. Extra, extra food for you tonight. Good dog. Now, let's see if we can uh, see what I've drawn here. So here, hopefully, you can see this is Arthur's head. This is his neck. And somewhere in here are his fluffy ears. Now, we can't see his fluffy ears on an X-ray, can we? Not on the one I took. Now, because it's only light, light doesn't go through things. So all we can see is where there was light up here and where there was dark. So we get this shadow, don't we? Now, with X-rays, the same thing works. We get these straight lines and it makes a shadow. And we can see the shape of things when we have a look on our X-ray film. And we saw that. We see the lungs and the heart and all the ribs and things. So that's all very well. But with X-rays, they go through some things and they don't go through others. So I'm going to do one last little uh, X-ray picture, if I may, with you. And this time we're going to have a different patient. And this patient is a fruit drink. Now, what a funny noise that was. I'm going to prepare the x-rays again. Normally, we'd, we'd make sure that everything's in the right place using light, uh, and then we'd put the x-rays on. Don't I look cool? So here come the x-rays. Today, we're going to just use the light so it's nice and safe. Pow! <laughs> now, what you noticed, Basil, you were in the way. I'm terribly sorry. Right. Now, what you can see now is really interesting. I think it's interesting. So we can see the outline of the patient. Uh, the patient, of course, is the bottle. So we can draw around that. Here we go. It's a bit tricky because my arm is also causing a little shadow there. But we can see I can draw nice and neatly round. Whee! There's the lid. And it's much easier on this side. Whee! Boing, 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 boing. There. But as well as that, the light can go through the bottle. And you can see here that it's a different shade through the bottle than it is outside. It doesn't go through this beautiful black currant juice. So we can see here, this is where the black currant juice is. And this bit here, this is the lid. It doesn't go through the lid because the lid's really solid. Look at that chunky bit. So we've got a darker bit here that's lid. We've got a dark bit here that's the, the drink inside. And then we've got this bit in the middle. I'm going to put some dots on it there. So when we switch off the x-rays, take the patient away, remove the stool, remove the safety equipment. Oh. Oh. Looking good, feeling good, fine. Here we can see that just using light, we've been able to show where the drinky stuff is, where the lid is, and where the bottle, the plastic of the bottle is. And that's basically how an X-ray works, except instead of light, it's these magic rays that go right the way uh, through the body. And I think that's uh, that's pretty cool. So uh, let's have a, a, a finish off there, I think. We'll have any more questions, do email them in. I always love to get your questions. Uh, we'll come to those in a moment. But first, I need to set your homework, don't I? Now, this week, I can't get you to draw an x-ray. How would that work? They're invisible. Instead, I want to think about x-rays as a superpower. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. X-ray vision. Boy, you can see through things. Imagine how much fun that would be. You could see into places that you're not supposed to see into. <gasps> All the fun you can have. I'll leave that to you to think about. But what I would like you to do is imagine that you've got a superpower. It could be X-ray vision, but I think you can think of other things that are more exciting. So think what your superpower would be and draw yourself with that superpower. Imagine that. That would be tremendous, wouldn't it? My superpower might be I don't have to get dressed. I can just think, 
poo, and I get clothes automatically. I don't need to put my arms through things and my legs through things. I think, and I get dressed immediately. Pow! It had to be called Instant Dress Man. Do, do, do. So uh, you could draw whatever superpower you like and send that in to me, and I'll show them to the world uh, next week. And next week, my friends, dear inquirers, we're doing something a little bit more sedate. Next week, we're learning all about how bread is made. Oh, yes, the whole process, right through from fields to plate and everything that happens in between. We're going to meet some amazing creatures. Oh, yes, we are. I can't wait. So that's what's uh, in store for you next week. I look forward to receiving your homework. Um, and I will wish you and bid you a fond rest of day. Uh, I think we're out of time. So farewell, inquirers, wherever you may be. I'll see you next week. Ta-ta, ta-ta, bye, bye, bye.